Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Woolly Thistle Shopcast. I'm Corrine, your host, with my co-host Maggie. Hello, Maggie. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and it's really good to be back with you. It's been a couple of weeks and we are back with so much to talk about, right, Maggie? Yes. Gobs. Yeah, gobs and gobs. So we'll get started. But before we do, um, should we give away a, a prize right away? Yeah. Why not? It's a nice, fun way to start. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, first winner, a winner of a $25 gift card to the Woolly Thistle. First winner is Jane Wheel, and Jane said, love the whole podcast. Congratulations on the new yarn. Rambler is a perfect name and love the colors. I must say that the postcard from Fair Isle, Rachel Sheep, and Lambs made my day. Watch those, watching those lambs made me laugh out loud on They're a day so when I needed to laugh out loud. Good. As usual, thank you for brightening the day and the weekend. Oh, that's a lovely, lovely comment. <laughs> that is a good comment. So, Jane, if you can email us at info at the Woolly Thistle with prize winner in all caps in the subject line, we will get your gift card out to you. And we'll announce another winner later in the show. Yes. And if you want to be in the running for a $25 gift card or whatever else we might decide on, on in the moment, but it's usually a gift card, uh, just leave a comment down below and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So yeah, we're recording this on Monday, which is our usual recording day. It also happens to be the day that they are uh, putting the Queen to rest at Windsor. So I was listening to all of that driving in this morning and it is very somber and sad. Yeah. Um, and I think that uh, Britain has both exciting times and probably a little bit of um, shock ahead of them getting used to their new monarch I just know that growing up you know she was always there and I think um, I, I remember her 25th uh, her silver jubilee I was seven and <laughs> it was it was street parties for days and you know I think they just had her platinum not long ago um, so yes it, big changes uh, but of course Charles King Charles sounds funny to say but anyway, uh, that, that's the big news uh, around the UK, at least for now. Yeah. Um, and other than that, you know, uh, we launched our sock yarn, yeah. uh, Rambler. And thank you so much for coming out and supporting this, this wee shop here <laughs> by buying the yarn. Thank you for that. We'll talk more about that soon. Um, we have two segments today, one from mm -hmm. Kelsey. Uh, she will be talking about um, what she's swatching with. Um, yeah, so she's talking about, she did some swatching with Rambler and she's sharing a current whip with us. Yes, yeah, so we'll be visiting with her and we also have lovely Emma who will be talking about her sock design and uh, knitting with Rambler too. So those are always uh, really fun to watch. So we look forward to those. Um, Maggie, are you wearing any... <laughs> I'm not. We did not. We did I not get a memo not. or anything. But I'm um, not wearing. I got either. excited because it was a little cooler this morning, and it's a little cloudy. And I got excited. I did go into um, the closet, and I tried putting on um, well, my neighbor's quite ready. sweater, and I wasn't quite ready. Actually, I found that it felt very itchy. Oh no! And then I thought because I've worn it numbers uh, like gobs of times, it's not itchy. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it's not. But um, it's interesting. In one of your interviews with Ella Gordon. Um, she says if it's itchy it's not cold enough and so I put it on I put it on and I was like oh it's not cold enough and oh I thank god off. I don't remember so, her saying that. yeah Grady and I actually quote it pretty often <laughs> of like if it's itchy it's not cold enough um and That's I found right. that to be true because I've worn my Amory like yes. I wear it every season and yes. so for me it really wasn't indicated interesting that it's not yet cold enough interesting so interesting i know thank you for that that's a wonderful <laughs> wonderful nugget that totally went over my head probably because yeah. i've got a skin of a rhinoceros <laughs> <laughs> well i think too if you're so busy interviewing and yeah i don't remember we uh, you've chatted with ella a, couple a few times, times. Yeah. yes and she has wonderful things to say yeah. um but i will wear wool at the drop of a hat so yeah i'm not going to notice if it's itchy or not i don't think i don't know so i was a little disappointed Very, that i was yeah. like oh not yet so do you know what though this happened Happen to be clean and dry which is why I'm wearing it today <laughs> <That's> lovely <laughs> thank you but you know um I just decided it's funny it's a similar style to the one it I'm is. wearing I, I noticed Tina is actually has a yes style and I think on. it's probably something to do with the end of the summer days and yeah. just 
you know, I mean, I am gung ho to get into wool and be, you know, mm -hmm. all things wooly, definitely. But, yeah. you know, I think some days you're just like, oh, one more day of warmth and sun. So yeah. here we are. So, yeah, neither of us are representing, but we have, I'm sure, the eagle eyed amongst yeah. you will have noticed that we do have some lovely things to show. We should have a drink. And I go. know, right? <laughs> All right, so let's get on then. Um, do you have any whips to share? I do, I do. I'm very excited to share this too. All right. Um, so I have, I had to switch to the big bag. <laughs> um, so I've been working on my Rodari or Rudari, depending on how we. Yes, Rodari, I think, is completely um, acceptable. So I made it all the way to the yoke. Oh my good <laughs> grief! Oh, so, it's gorgeous. Isn't it pretty? Yes, it is. I love. I love this. I love it. I think it's the the bluish tone of the gray that's doing it for me, though. You know, it's not. Yeah. It's it's gorgeous, and the this is yeah, brilliant. So, um, popping out there. Adding the. I really like it. It's I'm so happy. Um, You're gonna wear that a lot. I am gonna wear it a lot. I'm really excited. Oh, coming for off it. the needles. I know, oh my god! But oh my those god. woolly stitches, they just hold. Yeah, you got one there. Oh. See, it's even popping up. Saying, "What about me?" I know. Yeah. That is the nice thing about knitting with woolly wool, if you didn't know, is that when you drop a stitch, it just sits there waiting for yeah. you to pick it up again. Now, do you want to see the boneheaded thing I did? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what the sleeve's supposed to look like. Uh -huh. um, you have like the, you know, you do a few rows in your main color and it rolls. Uh -huh. And then ribbing and then color work. Uh -huh. And then I got so excited with the second sleeve, I just skipped the ribbing. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't to... notice until I was joining the sleeves. Huh. So I think what I'm going to do at the end is I'll just chop off the, and knit the it straight up. part and just knit the ribbing in. So it's easily fixable. But I was like, what was I doing? I screwed and up. And I got so, I think I just got so excited. And I'm like, oh, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and then I forgot It's nice ribbing. like that. It is, but I want them to match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how difficult so of you. It also makes this sleeve like. You know, shorter, a little shorter. Yeah, because I skipped it. Yeah, but it's fine. You silly, you silly goose. I figure it'll give me give me a chance to cut my knitting. Well, that's it. Um, maybe maybe come back and tell us how that goes because yeah. I know that'll be making people you know clutch their pearls. Yeah, right I don't now. think it'll be bad because you you don't even increase the stitch count doesn't even change. So no, you I are, just need to cut. No, will you cut all the stitches or will you cut one and pull out the stitches? I'll probably cut. There's like four rows of stocking stitch here yeah. so I'll probably cut in the third row down to give myself a row of buffer but are you going to cut all the scissors yeah, through all of it? Chop it don't you get lots of ends when you do that yeah I don't care you don't care um, I, I like have... I might put the put the needle in yeah row below yeah um and then trim right and then just pull out yeah I've it's probably fine with this thicker yarn when I've done that with socks I've I've grown to only cut one or two stitches okay and then with the needle i I unthread all the rest of them. Otherwise, I end up with just loads and loads of ends and yeah. bits, and I don't know where I am. So, gotcha. yeah, I'll see how. It goes. So yeah, I'll put it on the needle first, then cut a couple of stitches, and then on then just unravel. Then unwind it. So yeah, let us know how that goes. Well done, you making a mistake, yeah. silly goose. Yeah, we get so excited. It was really, and it was it was the second sleeve, and it was it was me zoom, feeling zoom. like I know what I'm doing, <laughs> and just spacing out and. And not checking. Not, yeah, <laughs> just clearly not checking, but um, oh, at least it's an easy fix. It very much is, yes. So it yes. could be worse. Um, Love that. And then, yeah, I'm I'm just really enjoying the, the color work now. It's gorgeous. So you'll have this done this week, I yeah. imagine. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, and in case people ask, 1700 is the uh, main color. The dark blue, I believe, is 9418. 001 is the cream. Cream. And ninety four twenty seven. That sounds right. Um, is the rust color gorgeous? So gorgeous. Yes. Well, you're putting me right to shame. Well, I mean, so knitting with Let Lopi, this this thing just flew. <laughs> it, my it next really... project will be in Let Lopi then. Yeah. Because it is taking me a while, but I'll show you my progress thus far. I'm knitting. We can put a picture here. The Keris at uh, best, and I'm just going to fold it up because it's easier to show but I am only here oops my belt's gone um so this is taking me quite a while to knit I'm enjoying knitting it but I've been out in the garden oh yeah so I've been spending quite a bit of my free time when it's light which is getting shorter 
um, yes. outside. Uh, I have I have a very established garden that I'm where I'm living now, and it's a mess. So I've been out trying to prune and clean up and get ready for things. So um, not as much knitting time. Also, I just have to look after my hands and not overdo it right yeah. now. I I have to be patient. So I am trundling away here with this, but this is going to be a vest. And I'm going to love wearing it. It's all curly right now. I think her color work is genius. It just pops, but then has low contrast in some places and pops in others. There's just a lot of knitting in that too. It's, it's a just... fingering white, yeah. yes. I am knitting it in the round. It would take twice as long, I think, if I was knitting it back and forth. So I'm committed to knitting it in the round and sticking the neck hole and the arms. And I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to that. But it might take me a while to get up there. How much longer do we have on the sweater cow? How are people doing? I want to say we we have at least three weeks left, and it's a mix. Um, some people are still like us trucking along, yep. and some people have been done now for a Crazy. couple of weeks. Crazy, I know. I've seen some beautiful, beautiful finished objects and yeah. work and whips as well. So yeah, so we're just over the halfway mark. Mm -hmm. Plenty of time. Yeah, don't get stressed. Just it's not a race. It's and not. if you find that you're not done by the end of the cow, that's okay. Good company. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, it's about knitting together and just enjoying each other and our knitting. Mm -hmm. So, however that grabs you is how you go with it for sure. Yeah. Um, all right. So, that anything else that you're knitting on? I No, I've been really monogamous. I have not touched really anything else. I did do a little bit of spinning, but I don't have anything to show. Yeah, I hadn't sat behind my wheel in a while. And you so, were talking about that last time. Yeah, I, I go through seasons, and usually in summer I'm spinning a huh. lot. Huh. Um, and not not so much this summer. Not so much this summer. Okay. I, I don't know why, but it's okay. You've been knitting. Um, I, I have, I have. So yeah, it's been it's been good. I think I have almost a sweater quantity spun. Oh wow! In what can you tell us? Well, some of it had was had already been finished, um, and it was in that. I think I showed it here. It was a gray Shetland that oh, I yeah. spun. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and I went stash diving and pulled out some bats that I had, mm -hmm. so that they'll also be woolen spun. And I think I'm gonna do another Lopi style sweater, but mm -hmm. enhanced one. Very nice. It's nice and fluffy. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Oh, well, do bring that in when you're ready. Um, okay, so let's then talk about what else we've got coming up. I think really we are... You no. Know, <laughs> yes, sorry to please. Interrupt. That's okay. Um, but we've not shared at all yet where we're going to be in October. Oh, we're going to be at Rhinebeck. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we are. Yeah, so to be clear, we're not vending <laughs> at Rhinebeck, no. but we will be attending. Yes. Um, and so we hope that we see you all. Uh, we are planning on attending the podcaster meetup at 1 o'clock on the On hill. the hill on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be there. Yeah. Um, yes, we'll be there together. Yeah. This is the first time that we'll have done this together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be so good. It is. Yeah. It is. <clears throat> but I think we're going over on Friday. Yeah. Um, um, to yeah, have a look we, around. We are excited to be, we're just attending as guests of the Woolen Folk event. Yeah, which is new. Is it brand new this year or was last year? It's a newish event it's if it's not brand new. This was the first year I remember it sort of popping up on my radar. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that it... <laughs> um, oh, yeah. you're so clued in yeah. though. It maybe I, I, I think though that I don't know. For me, like last year, I wasn't ready to attend. Rhinebeck. No, I we didn't so go busy. at all. Yeah, um, but I'm excited to. Yeah, focus. it's been it's been a couple of years now, so yeah, mm -hmm. it'll be good. Um, if you see us there, say hello. Don't be shy. Yeah. Happy to say hello, mm -hmm. um, and show us your whips and show us what you're knitting, and yeah. maybe you'll have a sweater. I think I'll be picking from sweaters past unless I can really get moving on that. I know. I'm hoping it's cool enough. I haven't worn my vanilla fluff at all yet. Ooh. Um, so I'm hoping I can wear that. Yeah. The last couple of years that I was at Rainback, <coughs> it was bleeding hot, though. It was so hot. But um, yeah. chances are good, being in the end of October, middle of October, that... It might be cold enough to really be wearing some fluffy stuff. Yeah. I have mm -hmm. a couple lightweight sweaters, so I might, I'll, I'll probably be okay. Yeah, yeah. I will probably don a vanilla, knowing me mm -hmm. for sure. All right. So anyway, um, and if I, but if I get that finished, I'll wear that. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So, uh, what else is there? Any other news, Maggie? That I'm forgetting. I don't think there I is don't any think so. We have a lot going on at the shop. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to get in and start telling you what all is coming. Fine. Well, it's that time of year again when Blacker puts out their birthday yarn and um, we are honoured, as always, to have a small supply. Now, this is limited in availability, uh, but this is their brand new birthday yarn, which will be going live today. Mm -hmm. 
um, at what time, Maggie? Um, at noon. At noon. Noon Eastern time. So, so it, 9 a.m. if you're on the West Coast. Yep, so 12, 9. And if you're a fan of Blacker, you know how uh, wonderful their birthday yarns are. This year is called uh, Folklore. And it's a woolen spun. It comes in four ply and DK. And it we is... have the four ply up there. Is this the DK here I'm mm -hmm. holding? Okay. Oh, yeah, I'll let you. Um, yeah, so we've got four ply and DK and seven colors plus the neutral, mm -hmm. natural. Um, and also, you know, this is in collaboration with a local college, I believe, yeah. where the textile students um, made a project of basically soup to nuts designing the yarn and everything that goes with it. Yeah. And Blacker was so thrilled with it that they actually have gone ahead and um, are running with it. So this is folklore based on Cornwallian, uh, you know, folk tales. And should we just go through and show the colors then? Yeah. All right, I'll start with this one, which is natural. Um, where do they put the name? Lover's Cove. Lover's Cove. So natural is Lover's Cove. Oh, <clears throat> I haven't told you what's in it, have I? So this is a Shetland English Cream Merino and North Ronaldsey, which, ha, oh, gorgeous. In a woolen spun, and you can see those hairs in there. There's just a lot going on in there. Maggie, how would you describe this? I think it feels spongy. Yeah, it's really squishy. Yeah. It's got good bounce. Yeah. But it's got that sort of woolen spun sponginess that I really like. Um, so I think this is going to knit up beautifully. I don't doubt that for a second. Of course, you know, being their birthday yarn, we don't have any samples. We just got it and it's going right in the shop. So this is Lover's Cove. Um, then we have Cliff Pinks, which is a gorgeous color. And you can see the gray coming through there. This one uh, is kind of like a brick color. It's mm. called Bolster's Blood. It almost has a pinky quality to it though, doesn't it? It does. But it's definitely brown. And this one here is very similar but darker. Mm -hmm. We can show them together. Yeah, called Lady's Lantern. I think it's darker in real life than this showing. Mm -hmm. But you can see a little difference there. So Lady's Lantern. It's lovely. It's like a chocolate. But it's got pink It's undertones. got a little, almost like a Merlot yes. type color yes. to it. That's a good way to describe it. Lovely. So, um, and then the light blue is Logan Rock, and it's a nice heathered light blue. You can see lots of gray in there. Yep, and then here we've got Midsummer's Night, which is a lovely darker blue. Let me see that light blue. There they are together. Nice high contrast if you want. The Fairy Miners. That's so good. <sighs> it's sort of a corally pink. Yeah. So... I don't yeah, know if we want to show it with the others. There's so many, so uh, I think, like some good, oof, oh, pretty, so pretty, and then with that as well. <laughs> Very lovely. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, um, Pisky's Garden. <laughs> Pisky's Garden. That's Pisky with a K in the middle, which is lovely. And I think actually, look. I mean, you got kind of two. Uh, very uh, natural. <laughs> Sorry, I'm losing my basket. Yeah, and my label. So you kind of got blues and greens, and then you've got all these pinky mobbies that <laughs> Maggie's having a hard time with. <laughs> Malfunction over here. But I'm sure there's lots of cross-pollination yeah. of colors to happen yeah, there, there too. Yeah, they all kind of coordinate so beautifully. Yeah. I really like those, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my jam. Yeah, so... I should switch. I take the pile of blues right, and Right, exactly. And we wanted to quickly show you as well the four-ply. Um, here <coughs> in, in this hand is the DK. And the four ply is in this hand, so obviously it is thinner and beautiful. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, so it's the same colors in the four ply, but yeah, it's just so beautiful. It really is. Um, so we have the four ply and the DK. The four ply is also really squishy and bouncy. I think it's just the breeds and the yarn. Yeah. So really um, lovely. Whichever one you most enjoy <clears throat> knitting with, um, I would get them while they're available because yep. Blacker's birthday's yarn is usually here and then and that's gone it. and gone. So yes. yeah, very excited to have that. Thank you, Blacker, for letting us have that this year mm -hmm. again. We appreciate it. 
so yeah so that's going on sale today and is first come first serve we're not doing any uh, build up to it it's here yep. um and <clears throat> hopefully if you're interested in that you are successful we were able to get a tiny bit more than we have in years past but it's it's not much but we're trying uh this is a very rare um event that they have and they usually sell right out well maggie i think it's time we go visit kelsey and see what she's up to come back after and we'll be waiting here for you one hi it's kelsey i'm just jumping in to talk about two things um that i've been working on this week first is a shawl called the area shawl and that may be displaying backwards now that i'm looking at it but it's spelled a e r i a it's a shawl by Linnea Bornstein, who does a lot of short row leaf kind of patterns that look really good in multicolored color shifting yarns. So I'm working on mine in Ol Centrum Sport Weight, which is the, what we carry right at this minute from Ol Centrum, in their white and one of their color shifting yarns that shifts sort of through, I'd call it sort of a muted... A muted rainbow it's not the brightest rainbow in the world but it does shift all the way through from kind of purpley to orange and green and yellows and if you look at it a little more closely you can see that those colors are all made up of two plies being one color in one strand and one color in another so like that one for example is red and blue and together it makes purple and then as the two, sh two strands shift, the colors shift. And I'm having a great time, having a great time with this shawl. A um, couple things that I really like about it. First, you start way over here with this little bitty end. You literally cast on, I think it's two stitches right at the beginning. And then you're doing increases and decreases actually to make this sort of elongated triangle and this is not blocked clearly because I'm still working on it but you make this elongated triangle that by the time you get to the middle you end up reversing it so you end up having not quite a full like triangle shape and not a crescent shape either it's sort of in between the two which I'm really enjoying the second thing is that this is made entirely with German short rows so all of these leaves and all of the see you can see a bit the shifts in even in the white that add little triangles and little shapes here and there to fill in between those leaves. Those are all German short rows. And German short rows, I think, are the easiest and some of the best looking short rows because you're not having to pick up a wrap or do some of those other fancy things that you have to do with some other techniques for short rows. You're literally, when you turn your row around, you shift, you slip the first stitch back to your right needle and flip it over. So what you're ending up with is pulling the U of the stitch up and over the needle. So you end up looking like you have two strands, but it's still just the one stitch. And when you, and then you knit back the other way. So when you come back again, and this is all done in garter stitch, so you can't see those things. Um, but when you knit back the other way, you just knit through and behind though that sort of U shape as if it's one stitch, no, no picking up. No worrying if you're sort of picking up in the right direction, this way or this way, because I've had some tricky, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me, but I've had some issues with, uh, especially with wrap and turn short rows, where I end up picking it up, I think kind of the wrong way, and it ends up leaving either a bar or a little hole. Um, so it's definitely something I can work on, but in the meantime, I don't have to do that when I'm doing German short rows. Um, so this designer actually has several patterns that use, make these sort of leaf shapes, kind of an organic-y, leafy shape. Um, everything from this kind of wide shawl to a, a long straight scarf, um, one where the leaves are, leaves are sort of on the bias that kind of looks like that in the end. Um, so there's a lot of different options for different, different people, different amounts of yarn, things like that. This is... Um, one one other thing that I wanted to share about this is because of its construction, when you start here and you increase, increase, offset with some decreases to make the shape, but then you get to this middle. This is the biggest part of the shawl. 
which I'm not holding up very well, but maybe that way. This is the biggest part of the shawl and you're knitting it from here to here. So I think it was, I believe it was only 100 and, 110, 120 or so stitches on the needle at one time. That's the most you ever have. Um, Cause I don't know about anybody else, but I end up losing track of myself or having to, having to stop knitting when you get interrupted mid row um, and having a hard time picking it up again. When you, some of the circular or crescent shaped shawls, you have 300, 400, stitches on the needle just on one row and sometimes that single row can take you half an hour 45 minutes um, and I kind of lose track of what I'm doing and you end up if you get interrupted not being able to finish the row where with the way this is constructed and I'm not giving anything away this pattern is a great value there are so many every single line is different don't make don't let that intimidate you because most of it is garter stitch it's just the number of stitches that you're doing before you're wrapping and turn not wrapping and turning German short rowing and going the other direction. But when the when the longest row in the middle here is only about 100, 120 stitches, I'm not remembering now, um, it's really, really manageable. You can uh, do a whole row in less than 10 minutes, depending on what how complicated you are, you're doing it and how fast of a knitter you are. Um, but then when you get sort of back towards the end, I'm here and I think I have 30, 30-ish, 30, 30, 40 stitches here, and I'm still trucking along and I'm gonna finish with the same shape that I started at the beginning. Um, I just think it's a really cool construction. I think it's a really great use of some of these color shifting yarns with the long color shifts. Um, as I said, this is the All Centrum Sport Weight. Um, it calls for two skeins of the sort of background color, which for me is the white color, um, and one skein of the color shifting color. Um, it does say that you'll probably use all of your color shifting color and I have these left. This is my second ball of the white and this is my only ball of the color shifting and I do have the label sort of stuck in the middle. So you can see how it does end up using quite a bit because I probably have another, I think I have three or four more of these leaves um, to go and I have this much of the color shifting yarn. So hopefully I'll make it, I think I will. I think I'm in good shape. Um, but I just wanted to talk about that for a few minutes because I'm just really enjoying this pattern. I'm really enjoying the yarn, how it smells. It's very wooly, very sheepy, not in a scratchy way. Just, I, it does remind me of a Rama Finnelgarn or something like that, that sort of Scandinavian. Um, Tuku wool is also sort of similar. It's very squishy in garter, garter stitch. Um, and I think it's turning out really nicely in this particular pattern with the color shifting. Um, you could also do it in a solid color and you could also do it opposite with your color shifting in the background and your leaves in solid. Um, but that's all up to you and I think it's really fun. And if you don't like this shape, as I said, the same designer has a lot of other patterns that do the same short row leaves, but in a different finished shape for the project. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is Rambler. We've been talking about Rambler a lot. This is the Wooly, Th Wooly Thistle's first yarn. Um, here it is. This is um, a hand wound ball that I, I wound from the skein uh, just because I felt like it. Not because I ne needed to or didn't need to, but um, this is the Golden Fern color. I'm hoping this is coming across fairly accurately. It's sort of, I'm trying to see different sun lighting um, it definitely is sort of a brown green color. There's a similar, similar color in, um, Finnelgarn that, uh, Korean used for detailing on one of her vanilla sweaters. It's similar to that color. Um, it's definitely a warm brown, yellow, has a tiny bit of a greeniness to it. Um, it's called Golden Fern. That's the color name. Um, and I've just been playing with it. This is not a thing. This is a swatch. Um, it could be a sock by the amount of time that I've been spending on it. But what I wanted to do is swatch in a bunch of different needle sizes and um, compare how they looked and how they acted in a fabric. So I started at this end here with a US 1 here. I'll hold it that way. Which is a pretty dense 
You can see through it a little bit, but it's a pretty stiff fabric. I'd be very comfortable using this for socks. Um, see, I noted with my little yarn over hole, it's a US one. Um, it's about 32 stitches. This is unblocked, unwashed, because I'm still, here's the needle, still working on it. Um, but it's about 32 stitches to four inches, which is a really good sock gauge. Um, and I really like the fabric. It still has a bit of give, a bit of stretch, but it is not feeling flimsy. It's not feeling too soft. It's feeling pretty durable, um, but also very uh, smooth and wearable. Then I, have, I put two rows of purl in, switch to a US 2. Then again, two rows of purl, switch to a US 3. And again, two rows of purl, and now I'm on a US 4. The US 4, I'm getting just about 22, 23 stitches. It's hard to measure because I haven't gotten very far. Um, so over the three needles, the four needle sizes, one, two, three, and four, I went up from, I went from 32 gauge to around 22, 23 gauge. And you can see the difference on the, it's the same number of stitches. I never decreased on the edges. And that one's about that wide. And this one is already about that wide. Um, so you can see how it increases. It is rolling a bit because it's stockinette and I didn't put any um, garter panel. And I will post pictures of this on our website once I get it blocked so you can really see the shape of it. But it does increase in size and it does change the fabric. This is the three. So you can see it's a lot, a lot drapier, a lot smoother, um, a lot stretchier. Then on the one, which was this one, one versus three. Um, I think depending on what gauge you're looking for, the three or even the four would make a really nice sort of flowy sweater. Um, I think you could get it to the gauge that you need for the vanilla sweater actually pretty easily. Um, not sure if I'll, if I'll get it with the four because I'm a pretty tight knitter, but I would say I, would, I could definitely get it by the five, by a US five. Um, and I think it would actually work really well. It's a little, it's com this is completely unblocked, but you can see it already is filling in a little bit in the holes in between. So I think once it's washed and blocked, it would actually make a really nice sweater fabric. So while yes, we're, we're thinking of Rambler as a sock yarn, which I think it would be great at, at a US one, for me, this is all for me, your tension may be completely different, but for me, a US one would make a nice sock um, all the way through sort of a few sweater options on the two, three, and the four, depending on the gauge that you're looking for and like the structure of the fabric that you're looking for. Um, through, I think if you're going for a shawl, especially lace, you may want to use a five, six, or a seven. I haven't gotten to that part in my swatch and I don't, I'm not sure that I will um, just because I'm swatching 34 stitches and that may end up being quite a big swatch by the end. I might reduce that or I might not knit it at all. I'm not sure yet. Um, but this is just a fun way that I like to test out a yarn. If I'm, there's a yarn that I wanna try, I can try it on a bunch of different needle sizes without having to swatch a bunch of different times. I mean, casting on doesn't take that much effort, but this is a really easy way to keep your swatch together and to compare on exactly the same conditions of blocking, exactly the same conditions of knitting, um, and see what kind of fabrics you get. So again, this is Rambler by the Woolly Thistle. This is the Golden Fern color. Knit on a one, two, three, and starting on the four. Well, thanks for joining me. Um, I hope that something that I said about Rambler about or about the Air Area Shawl and Old Centrum has been helpful to you um, and enjoy the rest of the podcast. Kelsey, that was fantastic. I loved seeing her shawl. Um, she's knitting just a beautiful shawl and um, I went ahead and grabbed some Old Centrum to show you. Right. Um, she's using one of She's the... using, yeah, she's using a cream colored base. I don't know if she's using 100 or 101. Um, we can put that in the show notes though. And she's using some of the color changing. Uh, we have a restock coming. We're currently out of most of the color changing. We have a gray color changing, which is still still pretty, but not the vibrant colors Kelsey's knitting right. with. So, but we do have a restock. 
We've been promised yeah. it's coming. We've been waiting a wee while for it, but yeah. it's on its way soon, hopefully. Yeah, it does come to us from all Comes, central yeah, from Sweden, Sweden, so it does take a while. But. Yeah, but they have just beautiful colors. We we mm -hmm. really enjoy this yarn, and this is a sport weight, if I remember mm -hmm. right. It is a sport weight. Yeah, weight. and I think we're looking at uh, stocking up their worsteds. Worsted we, weight we again. Are, we mm -hmm. are. I think with this stock up, we're going to bring in the worsted weight, yeah. so, which we've not had in a while, which is wonderful. We're I'm, excited for that. And I knitted my bright green sweater in the worsted weight. I really like that sweater. Yeah. It wears nice. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there is still good stock on all the solids in the shop. Yep. Um, and yeah, you can go to the shop and see the color changing skeins that we have available. I think we're going to add a couple to this restock too. And um, sign up for a back in stock and you'll get an email when yeah. the old Centrum is newly topped up great great and thank you kelsey we love hearing <coughs> from you and seeing what you're up to and she was also talking about rambler mm -hmm. so should we talk about rambler yeah yeah rambler is of course the woolly thistles brand new yarn it's a sock yarn and um it had its debut weekend the weekend of the monday that we're recording so we're just coming off of that and it was so exciting wasn't it it really was yeah so um, let's let's get this up there feels a little um it feels a little surreal to me yes um to in actually a really have good way on. yeah um we've been working so hard um with the team at bat and kill they're so they've been so good um and i do i just it feels really nice to not only be able to hold it in our hands but to be able to share it and to have the design on the label mm -hmm. and of course we have the woolly thistle logo uh, uh i know that color <laughs> My goodness. Maggie, we actually sold out of the natural. Yeah. It sold out. Crazy. So thank you for that. We will be um, attempting to uh, stock this permanently. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so we will have more of this, but we will have to wait for more to be spun. Um, but yes, yeah, so we have, we still have some of all the other colors. Yeah. Um, so yeah. if you're At interested. time of recording, Golden Fern's getting a little low. Yeah. So... Um, yeah if it's out you can sign up for the back in stock but it'll be a while before yeah so if you're interested in this at all I would I would go ahead and try and get it now so let's let's just just look, keep looking at it it's our baby <laughs> <laughs> and it really has been a team effort we've had bat and kill be absolutely great with their spinning and their quality control yeah. um there was us deciding what it should look like and what it should be made yeah. with and the type of uh, twist in it and that it is a sock yarn yeah but it's 100 percent wool made with dorset romney and Corey dale mm -hmm. and it is gorgeous we are so proud we're proud mamas uh, yeah and then christine who is our graphic designer who is also maggie's cousin by the way she does all our artwork which is fantastic and uh yeah and Josh is busily working on yeah. uh, working in our second order of this. So more is coming, but it'll be quite a while. I mean, making yarn is not a quick endeavor at right. all. So what else do we want to say about this, Maggie? Um, all the orders, you know, you should have your um, your yarn by the time you're seeing this. I yeah. would imagine uh, we have a lot of orders to get out. So if you don't have yours just yet, it's on its way, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but if you want to uh, share in our Facebook group and on Ravelry and definitely on social media, um, your Rambler purchase, we would be grateful for you helping, uh, you know, spread the word and share, share our joy about this lovely yarn. Yeah. And tell us what you're going to be knitting with it too. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to get it on the needles again. Yes. Well, I am still knitting mine. I um, still have to finish my second sock. Oh, you're not having second sock syndrome, are you? No, I'm having must finish sweater syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> so the last time you saw this, this was at the exact same uh, place that it's at now. Uh, that's because I am waiting for a quiet moment or two to turn the heel while recording me doing that because um, the Agatha, this is the Agatha sock pattern that I designed uh, back in 2016. Um, the Agatha sock course is coming and I'm in the midst of recording it. So that's why I haven't made a whole lot of progress. Pro I said that British. <laughs> whole lot of progress on that uh, but it's coming I'm just waiting for a quiet moment or two to record turning the heel and I'm thoroughly enjoying knitting the Agatha socks again and this yarn is just is squishy and does texture really really well mm -hmm. um, I think Emma's Emma Woodhouse pattern has done yeah. superb um, and just lovely little bits of lace on that on her design 
put a picture there. So just thank you everyone so much for turning out and uh, supporting our first effort at making a yarn. We're so excited. And now we just, wishing. I know, and now we need to just share with the world um, that we have this. So yeah, yeah, thanks for your support on that. It's great. So Maggie, should we go visit with Emma now, uh, the author of the, or the designer of the Emma Woodhouse uh, sock pattern? Yeah. All right, let's go. We'll see you when you come back. Hi everyone. Uh, my name's Emma and I'm coming uh, back to you from Baltimore as I do about once a month. Although this is a little bit of a special occasion because the, um, Rambler sock yarn is finally here and I'm here to talk to you about a pattern I designed um, that's going to be available exclusively at the Woolly Thistle um, that we're putting out in conjunction with the Rambler release. So this is my sock pattern. Well, this is, a, this is my sample. <laughs> this is, these are called the Emma Woodhouse socks. Um, Emma Woodhouse is the Jane Austen character. Um, and my name's Emma, so I thought it was a, it was a nice name. Um, but I always name my socks after Jane Austen characters. <laughs> so uh, these are this is one of my favorite sock patterns I've designed, and it hasn't been released yet. So it's this is a exciting first release of this pattern. So the lighting is not as natural as it usually is today because it's pouring down rain. So the lights are on in my house. Um, but yeah, it's uh finally fall weather which is nice as you can see I'm wearing a sweater this is wool this is Donegal Darnie wool actually the um which the woolly thistle carries in an Aran weight although this is a fingering weight uh version that I got in, in the UK but uh this is just a vanilla sweater that I steeped so you could basically make this exact sweater in Aran weight um if you got the Donegal Aran weight wool from the woolly thistle and knit the victory cardigan but yeah so this is so it's finally getting getting uh getting a little a little more like fall here so it's exciting but anyway rambler i was so excited to get um this yarn in the mail this is the natural color and i have two dyed colors to show you as well right here got this beautiful dark green and this kind of amazing gold color this is one of my favorite colors I've been really gravitating toward this color for the last kind of year-ish. Um, last year in my selection box for um, Black Friday, I got the Rama Fennel Garn in this color with the matching plum mohair and I made a hat and I was obsessed and I wanted a sweater. So that might happen this year. Sorry that I don't want it to blow, the lighting to blow this out. But uh, yeah, these are really juicy as Karina and Maggie said they are juicy juicy colors I really like that there's a little bit of grayish in the um in the natural that comes from the Romney I'll show you a picture of some of the sheep breeds that go into this in a minute um but here's a little close-up of the socks they have a little mock cable down the side and this kind of floral tulipy pattern on the front that's it's just mirrored on the other side so it's symmetrical the ribbed pattern up at the top um follows the the pattern like it it, it goes into the pattern which i think is a kind of nice touch it's plain on the back although you could pattern the back if you wanted to um it has a heel flap and gusset just a slip stitch heel flap and a regular gusset there and um, a standard wedge toe finished with Kitchener stitch. Although you can, as always, add any of your own modifications to that um, if you prefer. So I know lots of knitters have different heel preferences, different toe preferences, different cuff preferences, length preferences. So as always, this is just your canvas with this fun lace pattern. Yeah, okay, so let's talk about what went into this wool. Um, it's really, really bouncy, it's three plies. Um, it's very like, it's soft, but you can tell this is, it's gonna be strong. Um, I can always, one of the things I like to do to test how strong a sock yarn will be is I try to break it with my hands. Um, I can usually break all sock yarn even if it has nylon in it. I just have to like wrap it around more times and tug harder. Um, and this was hard to break. So that means it's strong. It's gonna be strong on your feet. The more plies something has, the harder it's gonna, or the harder wearing it's going to be, the better it's going to be in terms of like 
how much longer you can wear before you get a hole in it. So three plies is really good for a sock yarn. Round is really like good for a sock yarn, a good high twist, bouncy, that kind of thing. So even though it's hundred percent wool and there's no added nylon, it's definitely going to be strong, natural sock yarn, which I love. I'm very excited about that. So let's talk about this a little bit, just a little bit about this, um, what breeds go into this and how um, the wool feels this way based on that. So got my fleece and fiber source book here. The cover's not on it, but here's the cover. This is what it looks like, fleece and fiber source book. But the cover just gets in the way from showing you. So here it is. So we start with Dorset. We're at 80% Dorset. And Dorset is really bouncy. <laughs> not a super long staple length, but it's, it. look at that, that's bouncy, bouncy yarn. So yeah, you're getting a nice, a nice roundness to this yarn. It is, yeah, it's pretty, pretty soft, 26 to 33 microns, mostly natural colors. Yep, this is a pretty cool. Um, we don't totally know how it came to be, but a lot of people think that it was um, developed by crossbreeding Spanish Merinos with Welsh sheep, according to this book. <laughs> so apparently they are a sheep that is known to have twins and triplets often, which has made them like have a bigger population. That's cool. Yeah, and they are a traditional British breed of sheep. Um, they're in a, they're, they really, like they, there's a lot of them in England and Wales. So that's cool. Um, so 80% Dorset. Um, a pretty versatile wool. It's, you know, the, the the whites take colors really clearly, which is why some of this yarn is so, so, like the dyed colors of this yarn is so amazingly vibrant, um, even though they're, um, you know, darker. It's a darker fall, kind of fall palette. They're super vibrant colors. They have some variation in the colors, but I think these are all, the, the wool that went into these, is, it's all white. Um, it's easy to spin. It has a pretty, yeah, the staple length is medium. I would say this is not super short. It's, but again, it's really bouncy, which is why this yarn is super bouncy. But so there's also two more breeds that go into this. I marked the pages here. Uh, there's Romney. And again, this is where we get that gray. Corrine mentioned that, or Maggie, one of them mentioned it. This gray color, which is a really traditional Romney color. You can get Romney in all these colors, but the gray is where you get that kind of like natural flex of heather. Um, just by basically carding that wool with all the other wools, it just gives it a little bit of a, um, a heathered gray edge to it. That's really nice. So Romney is also pretty long. Um, this book says about Romney that if non-spinning knitters, crocheters, and weavers could get their hands on reliable supplies of breed-specific commercial Romney yarns, they would fall in love um, because it is really soft. It takes dye really well. It, yeah, it has a long staple. It's just a good yarn. It's strong. Um, it doesn't even have a super low micron count, but it, yeah, it's, it's soft. It's strong. People really like Romney. And I have to say, I have a sweater that's in mostly Romney wool, um, from Vermont and it is really, it's a really soft, it's lustrous, it, I just love it. So yeah, long staple and um, and strong. And again, the color variation is really interesting and kind of makes this, gives this natural a little more nuance. I love the natural color of this. I will say this is stunning to me. So one more breed. Oh, we're 10%, we're 10% Romney, so it's 80% Dorset, 10%. Romney 10% Corydale. So Corydale, um, quite soft, but the thing about Corydale that's interesting is that there's not a lot of um, uniformity between the softness of Corydale yarn. So that's something that, I just, there's so many Corydales, they've really, they've gone off and, and created their own small lines of like subbreeds. And there's some variation here, but again, those Corydale uh, wool's white. So that's what we're getting. And Corydales are all over the world. There's Corydales in the Falkland Islands. There's Corydales in New Zealand, right? Yeah, New Zealand and Australia is the dominant breed there. 
They're everywhere. We've got them. Yeah. It began in New Zealand, right? But yeah, there, there's also, they're, they're everywhere. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. So those are our breeds here to make this a beautiful, soft, bouncy yarn. Um, I said when I first got it, the yarn that it reminded me the most of in terms of the feel um, that I'd used before was um, Mondim sock yarn. Mondim is similarly kind of round and bouncy. Different breeds go into it, but the, the yarn is, is um, behaves similarly in terms of like it's very stretchy and it's, um, yeah, it's, it's got that kind of round, high twist, 100% wool feel. This feels a little differently in the hand because of the different makeup of the yarn, the different fiber that goes into the yarn. But yeah, soft. So yeah, like um, Karina and Maggie said um, in the Shopcast, when they introduce this yarn, you don't have to knit socks with this. Um, I'm a sock knitter, but not everybody is. And I definitely appreciate that because socks are kind of a little bit of a beast and their stitches are small and all sorts of things. Um, but this is just 100% wool. I mean, you can even use sock yarn with nylon in it for anything you want, but this is just 100% fingering weight wool. Really nice, high yardage. Um, my socks only weigh 75 grams, which means they used just over 300 yards. So you're gonna have a nice amount left over, even if you do make a pair of kind of ladies medium socks. But that means you can get a much bigger pair of socks or a longer pair of socks, um, which is also great. But I was thinking of doing some color work with this. It's kind of low contrast. You could do high contrast if you got like the dark blue and the light blue or any of the colors with white. But I actually really like the idea of kind of low contrast color work. And I'm thinking of making, you know, a Norwegian hat like this, which would be really cool. In case you were wondering, this is Nordic Knits. This book is available at the Wooly Thistle. And this was one of the things that came to mind was to knit a hat like that. Really fun, kind of crisp details. I think it would, you know, I think that these would, it would be just, it would be cool. Or like a cowl or something with a Norwegian pattern on it. Yeah, it would just be kind of subtle, but really nice. I think they'd show up together really well. So we'll see. I haven't decided I might just make two more pairs of socks. Yeah, but I am, loving this yarn like I cannot I cannot even with it it's so good um so try it out it's really special it's really strong it's really versatile a lot of thought has gone into this yarn I mean you know no, me for me knowing like not even just like this is all wool, but like this is 80% Dorset, 20% or, and then 10% Cordell, 10% Romney. Like that's really cool to me to know that, you know, know a little bit more about, you know, what gives the yarn its qualities. It's just really exciting to me as someone who doesn't spin. I like to get on that train, but sometimes, you know, buy wool they're not gonna always tell you that kind of thing and it's really special to know a whole lot of things about what went into making this yarn so I hope you love it as much as I do and I hope you hope you pick up a skein or two this weekend <laughs> or sometime in the future because it's gonna be at the woolly thistle um so thanks for watching and I'll see you soon Bye. One and we're back, and isn't Emma just a delight? She's so enthusiastic. She is. We love her, <laughs> and her design is gorgeous. Bye. And very proud to be releasing the Rambler sock yarn with Emma's uh, pattern. Mm -hmm. Just a great combination. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So on with the show. Um, we are going to show you what is coming and what is in the shop right now. So. Hang on, there's a lot going on here. So first of all, we want to show you this giant red box, which if you are a frequent viewer, you may have seen this before. This is our 12 Days of Christmas surprise box. Uh, we do tell you that uh, Little Gray Sheep, or the Gray Sheep now, um, is in there. But, oh, it's really big. This will go under your tree if you so want. Look at this. So you get 12. Um, okay, let's let's get Maggie back. 
<laughs> for Maggie. Um, you get 12 boxes inside the big box. So that can go under your tree if you want. You can start opening them on December 25th for the 12 days. Or if you're like me, you're going to start somewhere on the 14th yeah. if you're disciplined or right when you get it. Whatever you do, it's up to you. We just ask that um, you observe... Um, not posting what's inside until the 14th at least because you know we don't want to ruin other people's surprises yeah uh this is doing or a, if you do post it you can put like a spoiler a with a spoiler alert yeah 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 don't look unless you you want to see kind of right. thing um but anyway these are these are doing great this is mm -hmm. our first time doing this we had a lot of fun putting this together it is not completely knit centric um there's some self-care there's some edible stuff that you're gonna love and of course uh gray sheep yarn is in there too which is just phenomenal you can see all the details at the shop um there'll be a link below where you can just go look at that these will start shipping out um early to mid november mm -hmm. so, so you'll have plenty of time to uh enjoy this um if you get it out the way now with a purchase we don't have a huge number left we don't um and i do want to say too uh it does feature yarn from the gray sheep uh the yarn is not christmas colored no so i just to make that clear because we had a question about it yes it's not um, red white and it green is or a anything. christmas box if it were very christmas colored as you could tell you yeah no this is um emma's beautiful dye job mm -hmm. on all her colors so yeah. um it's a bit of a surprise to see what colors you get the large skein the full-size skin is in a natural shade mm -hmm. and then there are five or five minis I think there's five, five minis, minis yeah. that are dyed um so you know there'll be lots of little projects there will be a pattern card in here too yeah. a pattern suggestion card i should say that will give you ideas of what to knit with it but yeah um thank you so much if you've already ordered yours you are all set for christmas good for you mm -hmm. um so yeah if that interests you get on that um or, or treat a friend treat a knitting friend a really good friend <laughs> Has to be a really good friend. Mm -hmm. All right. So what else do we have? We have line of fifteen. Yes, that's in the shop now. Got both covers. Both covers. So this is this is the um, what do they call that? It's black and white on the front, but yeah. it's a limited it's edition the... cover. Um, and then this one, the orange one, is a full color, regular cover. Uh, once inside the covers, they're exactly the same. Mm -hmm. It's just the cover. So yeah, we have both. Um, are these not on pre-order now? Or are they actually... Nope, they launched on Friday. So these are just in the shop and you can pick up your copy today. Yep. Very good. There are a lot of really good patterns. New articles. Um, with this issue, they've redone some things and added new articles. Yeah, they've really had a, a reboot. Yep. Yeah. They've had a nice reboot um, and just uh, topped up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's so pretty. That is pretty. Yeah. I was just looking at that one. Mm -hmm. so. so, yes, Lina, you know, they do such a great job always. So, yes. we have that. That's in the shop now. And while we're on the subject of books and magazines, uh, Murit issue three is here. We love this magazine. This is coming right out of Scotland. Alison. Do you know, Alison is actually the graphic designer that designed the Woolly Thistle logo. That's fun. Yep, yep. I know her mum. And um, and so that's how I was connected with Alison. And then Alison moved to Scotland and lives in Edinburgh with her Scottish husband. So, nice. Yeah, so we kind of live, we live reverse lives in a way. Um, each of us in each other's countries. <laughs> this is lovely though. They, they really do. There's a Scottish whiskey. You got to have that. They do feature a lot of crochet, which is nice, um, but they do garments. I actually think it's all crochet. Is it all crochet? Mm -hmm. There is are all always... in there where it looks like knit, but it's that special um, knit or special crochet technique that you end up with a stitch that looks sort of like a knit stitch. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Because yeah. I saw that and I was like, wait, I thought this was all crochet. Yeah. And then I looked at some of the instructions. I'm like, it is. It is all crochet. Um, and there are a lot of things and they're just beautiful patterns. Yeah. Yep. So. so we have that. This is their issue number three, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is in the shop now. Mm -hmm. All right. Actually, I think that that one's on pre-order. Um, so we have them. We've we, we received them already. Available for pre-order. Yeah. Yes. It's on pre-order. Their launch date must be coming very soon, though. I love that. 
Edinburgh, Scotland. That's where they're out of. Fantastic. All right, what else do we want to show? Um, one of my favorite publications just came out with their sixth issue, and that is Fair. Um, their photography is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So this is not a knitting magazine per se. This is more living well um, and crafters and artisans and about them uh, living their best life in Europe. I mean, just look. I think too, not to, it's more of a global, not just in Europe. Right. Mm -hmm. True. True. Um, it comes out of France, which is what made me think of that. Yeah. But all about creative living. Creative living. And just something that um, you just, I don't know, I can just look through this and I feel... <sighs> the photography is stunning. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, even even just looking at the, the mantelpiece there, there's so much to see and look at and enjoy. So this is in the shop now. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have five and six, and we probably have one, two, three, and four still as well. Yeah. Uh, we want to keep that in stock. Yeah. Maggie, what else? Um, I grabbed, we got back in stock the Knitted Shawls book. So I just grabbed it to show everybody. It's really good. Yeah, it's really good. And I think... Lots of gorgeous shawls in there. Um, Daughter of a Shepherd. Mm -hmm. um, her yeah, yarn is used in one of these. I guess near the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a hap. Happiness. Happiness hap. Happiness hap. This is the book. Yep. Sure Lots that. of you knitted that for our hap along. Yes. Um, yeah, there's just so many beautiful patterns in here. So this has been out of stock for a wee while, so it's back yep. in if that is of interest to you. Yes, and also back in stock is the Nordic Knitting Primer. Yes, so if you're new to color work, if you're new to knitting, mm -hmm. this is a great book. Yep. Uh, Kristen Drysdale, the author, uh, takes you right through soup to nuts how to how to knit how to hold your yarn for color work yeah i think margaret in the shop uh mm -hmm. is Did slowly she? working her way through the book yeah good for her yeah, yeah you so start she off starts you with just little cups yep very simple garter stitch gets you knitting with both hands right away there's lots of great yes um, tutorial photos this ended up being a project or a, a product that was created during covid and her husband ended up doing all those photos and they're great they are great and then she gets you into color work very quickly. Yeah. Um, and then walks you through it. Hold your hand. Yeah. Um, awesome. We also have a couple of kits in the shop that include everything that you need from, from the needles, needles and needles, everything. yarn, all of it. Yeah. So, yeah, check that out. If, that, if, that, if you're color work curious, mm -hmm. this would be a great way to go. Uh, a little bit of hand holding there. Yeah. Um, okay, Maggie, let's see what else we have. Uh, Shetland Wool Week 8? Yes, Shetland Wool Week 8 is now on pre-order. It should be arriving sometime soon. I'm really excited to get my hands on that one. Oh, I know. It's so good. So good. Yeah. If you've never ordered the annual, it is so much more than beautiful patterns. It's just Shetland life and um, interesting articles yep. and stories. And it's so yep. good. They do a lovely job with it. They really, really do. Okay, so... Um, oh, West Joshua Spinner's Holiday Yarn. Mm -hmm. Let's have a quite catch up about that yes, they brought um, out their uh this year's holiday colors and it's this is gingerbread um and it's a self-striping yarn and it's so cute i think it'd be great for uh, thanksgiving as well i love the smell of this i know yarn. <laughs> um and uh west Yorkshire spinners suggests pairing it with turmeric if you want to do alternate thank you um heels and toes yep um, you can do that. There's some really wonderful patterns out there, too. I was just going to say that they've put out, um, you get a PDF now of their designs for this yarn, for this design. And there's kids' socks, there's crocheted socks, and there's a couple of different um, uh, adult a, size socks. Yeah, there's a couple that even have color work on the top. I know. Bananas. It's so cute with like little Christmas trees. Yeah. And just adorable. So this is a real workhorse yarn. It's a 75-25 blend of British wool and nylon so it's really strong mm -hmm. but it's still soft yes yeah uh, it's worsted spun so you know it's going to you know wear like iron and this stuff really does wear like iron yeah. and it, but it's so soft it is so and soft woolly. because 35 percent of that wool content is uh blue face luster i keep sniffing it mm -hmm. it has one of the best sheepy smells it really does we have um we have a lot of their christmas yarns yep. on offer so uh this one here is candy cane 
And then we have, I like this one, Holly, 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 Holly Berry. And this is a fun one, uh, vintage tinsel, and it's got that sparkle in it. Yeah. We seem to be missing the rest of them. Oh, no, they're there. Oh, Fairy lights. With sparkle. And, um... Silent Night is on its way. It's on its way. Silent Night goes with the blue because it's a lovely dark starry night blue. Um, this is Juniper and it goes really well for heels and mm -hmm. toes. And then we've got Chocolate Lime, which is a very Christmassy green if you want. We've got Cherry Drop, which goes really well. Uh, that's a nice soft red. Yeah. And then we've got the Cayenne. Yeah, I feel like Cherry Drop goes really well with the Holly Berry. Yeah. Yeah, it could go with this too, though. Yep. Um, but the candy cane really definitely. goes well with that. Or go with green. Yep. So, you know, you, you've got plenty to play around with. We are doing six packs. Oh, did we not say fairy lights? Yeah. Um, oh, yes. Look at that. With the green yeah, or with or the definitely. red. Um, we are doing six packs. Uh, there's two different ones, and you can get various... Christmas past yarns, those are doing really well. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we get Silent Night in the pack with Silent Night in them, yeah, so we'll we be have available. One three pack that has gingerbread candy cane and holly berry, yeah, um, along with their contrasting colors, yeah. and then another three pack which will restock once um, Silent Night comes in that has all three of the sparkly right. colorways, yes, and their sidekick colors as well. Yep. So that's very good. There is still time, plenty of time to get your Christmas socks on your needles. So um, don't be in too, too mad a rush, but this is here now, ready for you. Um, okay, so Maggie, what else do we want to talk about? <gasps> this. Yeah. Junction Fiber Mill. We got some samples because they're right around the corner from us. Mm -hmm. And they're gorgeous. Yeah. I think this one here is the show stopper for me yeah although i love this they're photo. they're all gorgeous so they are all gorgeous but we have to talk about this i think yeah. so maggie what pattern is this this is the night shift from andrea memory which is a full-on shawl of six skeins it is beautiful beautiful this is using making tracks which mm -hmm. is junction fiber mills um on yarn and it, this is phenomenal. It's so squishy. It is. It's gorgeous. I'd use this as a blanket. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely a generous shawl. There, um, there it's is, so cozy. And it's the, sh is it, what's it called? Night Shift. Night Shift. And then, uh, of course, designed by Andrea Murray. Did you say that? I did. Okay, I'm saying it again. Um, but there's also a small cowl that she did. There is. I, I don't remember if that's the... She's got a whole mosaic series um, of... Sh and Shift is in almost all the names. The sweater, I think, is the Shifty. She's got the Night Shift shawl. There's another Shifty... <laughs> <laughs> um there's another shifty cowl which is uh, much smaller and then you 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 join it so it it's beautiful neck. it's gorgeous it's got an i-cord bind off i can see or an edging at least i don't yeah. know if it's actually a bind off um so this takes six skeins and mm -hmm. we want to encourage you to think about knitting with um making yeah. tracks uh, because it's gorgeous and you know paired with an andrea maori uh shawl yeah. it's just gorgeous look at yeah. The color changes. So if you buy, for a limited time, if you buy six skeins of making tracks, we will throw in a free set of stitch markers for you for yeah. saying thank you. I love the, oh my gosh. I look know. At, it's so pretty. It really is amazing. And yeah. it's so And soft. talking to Peg and Amanda, who are the owners um, and creators of making tracks, um, yeah, they said that you just pick six. So they sort Any of six. pick six skeins. Um, that were, Amanda said that they were some of the first colorways that they produced and they just brought home six skeins and, right. um, put them together and the pattern walks you through when to change colors. And so, yeah, you won't uh, be able to reproduce knit. this exact, but that's the fun. That of, is the fun. Should and we I, look at it? Yeah. Yeah, so we think these are just great ideas, too. We've got a couple more of their samples. Yes, we'll look at um, those. Because we've had some questions of, well, what do you make with a yarn that looks... We um, will show like you. This? Like, the skeins are stunning, but um, I think, too, if you're not sure what it's going to knit up like... Oh, I love this one. Me too. 
Um, but I, so mine, I think, would go something like you know a dark red going into these pinks, and then even the purples. And the purples. and actually, I, I would suggest picking something that's a high contrast as well, so that when you switch the way mosaic works, oh, yes. you're going to be slipping some of the stitches. Um, yeah, I, I think she calls them like blips. So oh, you're back to front. Sorry, sorry. So, you know, the yellow colorway here. Um, you're you're only ever holding one yarn at a time, so you're gonna have the background color, and then you're gonna drop that. So you want something that's a little bit of contrast, yeah. So you can sort of see the change. But what you could do is sort of have this going through the background, mm -hmm. and then have, you know, this contrasting. Yeah, you could even pick a natural. Yes, I was just gonna say you could. We need one more, Maggie. Um, I just wonder. I wonder about actually. I mean, this is where the fun is. is mm -hmm. You really can't go wrong. No. Something like that going on in the background. I think this is going to be mine. <laughs> Gorgeous. And then, you know, your contrast up front. Yeah. So, yeah, um, many choices. And we are happy to help you try and figure that out. Um, Maggie, we'll probably put together some photos. Yeah. Yeah, of six six uh oh god it's gorgeous it really is and of course this is a uh, mosaic knitting but it is stranded as well it is because you're kind of holding that one along the back so it is double thickness is what i want to say nice and squishy. very warm and squishy perfect for winter mm -hmm. knitting around the fire oh yeah. just beautiful just so gorgeous. but let's let's look at some other examples of what uh they sent us yeah so they have this other little shawlette which oh, it is the walk in the woods shawl on ravelry um it's so beautiful is this mosaic again nope i think it's just stranded I don't know. like i think it's just stranded no i don't see any strands or do i yes i do yeah yeah yeah, because I think it's not a very, you don't have long floats. Right. Um, and I believe that Peg um, from uh, altered the pattern a little. I think the patterning only goes up to like here on the design, but she just decided to keep it going. Oh, it's great. Um, and, oh, so this would have been solid up here? Yeah, and this was two skeins. So it was one skein of Farm Fresh and one skein of the Making Trucks. That is not a small little shawl either. No. So two skeins and you've got yourself this gorgeous zigzaggy, uh, color changing. This looks like it'd be very potato chippy. Yeah, for sure. I'm just going to knit another row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. lovely. And it's knit, um, your rows aren't long like this. It's knitted this way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Very, very nice. Yes. Gorgeous. And <clears throat> the sweater is very interesting too. Yeah, and so right here we can see a lovely color work yoke sweater. Mm -hmm. The body is knitted in Farm Fresh. Yes. And then she took one skein for the yoke. So what pattern is this, first of all? So this is the Goldwing pattern by Jennifer Steingast. Gorgeous. Um, and they used one skein of the making tracks that for this size that it only took one skein. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see how it goes through the different color changes. Yeah. Um, and then they did need a second skein to do the sleeves. So, but, but I bet they so have a lot pretty. less. So uh, probably mm -hmm. two skeins at least for oh, more dress. sizes. Yeah, yeah. It's so pretty though, isn't it? And then you're using the Farm Fresh, as well, which is a lovely base. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what exact base this is. They're yeah. always changing. It's whatever they decide. Yeah, but the, it's the it's always the Farm Fresh is a DK, so it is the same weight. Yes, so works it works well. very well. And of course, this is their Farm Fresh that we have right now, which is very, very special. Mm -hmm. It's Clune Forest and Cotswold. Yeah. I mean, seriously. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. So, yes. Oh, yes. I, there's endless possibilities with there this really yarn. Are. And we want, we want to champion um, Junction Fiber Mill as our neighbor. Uh, very local to us. They're, they're making this yarn. They're working with farmers who have, you know, very tiny flocks mm -hmm. sometimes to pull together what they then make and well worth a follow and checking them out. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, very yeah. exciting. Love everything. And don't forget, we're running a, a lovely little special right now that any six skeins, which includes making tracks or farm fresh, yeah. uh, any six skeins, you will get a free stitch marker with your not a free stitch marker. You'll get a free stitch marker set with your purchase. 
uh, because we really believe in what they're doing yeah. and just there's there's endless possibilities for you to knit with this and it's squishy and it's local and it's lovely. So yeah. that's that. We wanted to make sure that you understood the mission there. So that's good. Yeah. Um, Maggie, what else do we want to talk about here? Should we announce another winner? Yeah. All right, here you go. Let's see. Our second winner of the day is Jana Mani. Um, and Jana says, thank you for this episode. I love seeing the Fair Isle postcard, especially the lambs. Those lambs are hit. Um, yeah. all, all, <laughs> the, all the yarn looks so wonderful. I watched as I worked on my sweater for the sweater cow, and I'm almost ready to put the hem on it. Oh, good which job. Which will be the last thing. Your Christmas box, box looks amazing. So glad you have Rambler yarn now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jana. If you want to email us at info at the woolly thistle and put price winner in all caps, we will get you your $25 gift card. We certainly will. And you too can be in the running. Just leave us a comment below. It can be about anything. Mm -hmm. And make sure you subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up and you are in the running. So, so we have something super, super exciting and brand new to the shop that is being made as we speak. But we will have these in the shop in time very soon. And it is all the way from Ireland, Donegal. We have their woven uh, blankets. So just in time for winter. These blankets are... Um, made on hand or machine assisted hand looms mm -hmm. um, and we're going to have 11 or 12 designs this one here is particularly so pretty all those rainbow colors it's got a lovely fringe on it um i think i don't think there's a right side or a wrong side really either mm -hmm. um these are you know wool pure wool all the way from ireland mm -hmm. and uh just coming to the woolly thistle here so we're very excited yeah. about this and these are fairly large this one is 72 by 58 they're yes. they're an abundant size huge blanket you can throw this on a bed really cuddle up yes. yeah uh if you want to or just yeah cuddle up by the fire i yeah. cannot wait so um <laughs> <laughs> so bad. I'm such a, I, know. I love being cozy. I know. I, I know. And this blanket will keep you cozy. It's it woolly yes. um, and rustic, not prickly, quite cozy. Yep. They do say dry clean only, which mm -hmm. I think is fair. It's huge. So, yes. you know, might as well get that taken care of professionally. But uh, yeah, so we have 10 or 11 different designs coming. These, uh, we have three here right now um, that they sent ahead for us. Our order's coming and we will have these in stock mm -hmm. when they go in the shop. So this will not be a pre-order. Um, yes, let's look at that one, I Maggie. Know, I like this one. Yes, this is a very traditional checks. Um, blue, green and grey, which is just gorgeous. Oh, no. You know, you can just imagine this being on the back of the couch or over an armchair. Mm -hmm. It is it is it is heirloom quality. It is definitely. And it's warm and woolly and yeah, we're very proud to have these, yes, for sure. They're wonderful. Yes, yeah, so that's one. Um, I'm not sure what they're called, what the different names are yet. Uh, they all have this lovely Studio Donegal hand-woven Donegal tweed, pure new wool. Mm -hmm. Right, so and then the third one they sent us is Va Va Voom. I know, I love this. Look at this. And, you know, there's actually design going on in the weaving itself. That's mm -hmm. why you see those, they're, they're changing up the stripe. Yeah. So absolutely beautiful. So Yeah, you can kind of see if you open it up that there's panels, like zigzaggy panels on the side. Yes. Um, yeah. Which is beautiful. Yes, it is beautiful. These are heavy. They are. They're going to be warm and everybody's going to want one, I think. I so want I want one. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, so we're excited about that. Um, I think we'll try and get this product listing up in the shop so people can look. Yeah. And um, when they're available, we will let you know before they uh, go live so that you're there if you want one. Very exciting. And um, anything else we want to say about these right now except that we're so excited? <laughs> yeah, no, make sure you're on our newsletter so that as yes. soon as we have a date, um, we're just waiting for sort of final word from Donegal that they're ready and they'll ship before we put a date on them. Yes. So be on our newsletter and as, as soon as we have a date, we will share it there. Yes, and if you're anything like me, you know, your house wants to be wrapped in wool. <laughs> 
everywhere <laughs> you know from bags to your bed to yeah. your favorite chair to knit in um just living that woolly life that very much you can't have too many no you can't no you cannot so yes that's super exciting and um oh one other thing that's coming uh, this month mm -hmm. on their way now on their long journey from india um i happen to have mine here we have the woolly thistles very own sock pouch we had these several months ago and they yeah. sold out uh, of, of most of the colors very quickly um, we're getting most of the same colors back again so if you go to the shop you can see uh, the colors we have um, this one here is housing my Agatha sock pattern and all of that it's a great sock pouch size uh, these of course are made by studio Tolsta um, and it uses uh, Harris tweed which is a very special uh, tweed that is hand spun, uh, woven. hand woven up there in Harris in um, the Outer Hebrides. It's got the woolly thistle label on it too. And uh, the detail is wonderful. They, they use these lovely heavyweight zippers that never snag. And then inside is a lovely soft brushed cotton, yeah. which is very nice to the touch and keeps your knitting nice and safe. So we'll have, I think there's a good, maybe eight or 10 different color choices in this. I don't remember off the top of my head. There were these, quite a few color choices. Yeah. I think these will be in before the next shop cast. Okay. So we will try to include it in the next shop cast, but you know, if you're interested in this, and of course I am keeping my, got my hair on it. I'm keep. this is the other thing that Studio Tolsta makes for us is our, tote bags these are out of stock right now we will be getting more of these in it's keeping my Marie Wallen project very very happy with the the book in there um yeah so more of these to come um yeah yeah oh I love it I woolly woolly wool everywhere I love that anything else Maggie that I'm forgetting I can't think of anything else this is a bumper episode. Yeah. I feel it. Yeah, there's so much good woolly stuff coming in the shop. There is. Um, yeah. uh, and good stuff here already, too. I think the Junction mm -hmm. Fiber Mill. Um, so, Maggie, I think we are all set then. Be sure you're on our newsletter. I think Maggie already said that. Mm -hmm. that. That's important. All right. I think that's all that's left to say then is if you go out. Take it knitting. Bye. Bye.